What is God's motivation to offer salvation to humankind? Why, why would He care for us? See, friend, God's greatest desire is to see every person saved and transformed by His Spirit. He loves every human being. That's the reality that you have to accept. His love has no limit. His compassion is everlasting. And His forgiveness is endless. God is a loving Father who wants all His children to come home as soon as possible. God has chosen us, you and I, those who have accepted Him as, as, as their Father, those who have accepted His salvation, those who have accepted His free gift to you, to me. He has chosen us to be agents of this proclamation so that everyone will know there is a God in heaven who is looking for them. Now the question is, are you motivated um, to make His desire your desire? What's your, your motivation to do so? I mean, the question that we are going to be answering now is, why witness? Why testify? Why proclaiming the gospel? Why telling everyone about the gospel? This is what we are going to be studying. And I want to invite you to join us. Stay, stay tuned, because what we are going to do is starting our brand new series entitled Making Friends for God, The Joy of Sharing His, His Mission. Welcome to the first one of 13 of these lessons, and today's lesson is entitled Why Witness? Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, what a joy, what a joy to finally come to a point where we have to do something with this information that we have received, that we have to do something with this gift that you have entrusted in us. Today we pray, Lord, for your blessing upon this study, the beginning of this wonderful lesson that um, is ahead of us. And we pray, Lord, that your blessings will be abundant, not only to, in, in to, on today's um, study, but each one of the studies that we will have on this series. Father, please bless us. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen. And amen. The first verse that I'm gonna uh, I'm, I'm gonna invite you to to go with me again for this brand new lesson is found in First Timothy chapter two verses three to three uh, and four. First Timothy chapter two verses three and four. This is what the Bible says: For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our of God our Savior. Listen, why is He our Savior? Verse four: This Savior who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. This, this, Paul is saying something very, very simple but profound at the same, at the same time. He is saying that there is, not, there is not a greater desire, there is no greater desire than the desire that God has for people to be saved. Right? What a God! What a God, friends. Again, I want to welcome you to this brand new lesson. And I want to, I want to encourage you to get your own copy. If you don't have a copy of this, you can go, just, just go to the internet and Google it. Type, making friends for God, the joy of sharing in His mission. And you will have a lesson like this that you can follow along with these studies that you and I will have uh, beginning today. What is the lesson about? God wants you. To accept salvation. What is salvation? Salvation, simply put, is God bringing us back to Him. Because of sin, we were separated from Him. He gave a solution, His Son, Jesus Christ, to be the bridge. To connect the two parties that separated because of sin. And that bridge brings us back together to the place where you and I should, never, should have never left. And so, today, friends... We will start this brand new lesson that will help us not only to be reminded of why we are believers, but also to remind us that once we become believers, there is a, a beautiful responsibility that you and I that you and I have. So I'm going to give you some reasons um, that will justify why is it that we are to share this gospel and why people need to hear this gospel. The the first one, the first reason. Um, is found in Romans chapter 10 and verse 14. And this is the need, the necessity, the, the urgency of 
uh, spreading gospel, giving the solution to people, letting people hear about the solution. Here it is Romans 10 and verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him? This is the solution. Jesus, in whom they had not believed, called believed. And how shall they believe, believe in him of whom they have not heard? Number three. And how shall they hear without preacher? Preacher, Caruso, somebody that has to proclaim, somebody that proclaims, somebody that publishes. That's what the word Caruso means that is translated, translated into preacher here in Romans 10 and verse 14. Now, do you see the steps? For you to be saved, for me to be saved, there are certain steps that need to take place. Number one, I need to hear about the solution. Number two, I need to accept that solution. Number three, I need to believe in that solution. And as a result, I become a believer. I am saved. That's all that it takes. But if one of these steps is, is not, is not uh, taken, then we will not get to the end of it. Number one, we need to hear. Number two, we need to, be, we need to uh, accept. Number three, we need to believe. And therefore, we, you and I, become saved. Right? But if no one tells us how we are going to hear, is what Paul is saying in Romans 10, 14. If we don't hear, how are we going to accept something that we haven't heard? If we don't accept, how are we going to believe something that we don't know about? Right? And if we don't believe, if we don't accept, accept if we don't uh, hear about it, then how are we going to be saved? And here is the importance of you being the agent of salvation that God has chosen you to be. Because the, because the moment you open your mouth and to speak on behalf, on behalf of God, He will speak through you and the gospel, the solution, salvation will come to people and people will be saved because they have heard, they can, they can accept, they have believed, and now they are, they are proclaimed, they are declared saved. So friend, you, are, are you seeing the importance uh, of, of this peace, uh, the peace that you are in this chain of salvation? Do you see it? See, there are different ways that God is, decides to reveal, to reveal himself, different ways, several ways. Number one, and we studied this in the, in the, in the past series, right? Um, the Bible. The, the Word of God, when you open His Word, you actually learn about Him. And He manifests Himself. He, he reveals Himself through His Word. Also, according to Acts chapter 5, and verse 32, uh, through the work of the Holy Spirit, we, we get to know God, right? We get to, we get to receive our, the revelation of God. In Psalm uh, 19 and verse 1 says that uh, we can also know God through nature. When we see the heavens, the stars, the sun, the moon, uh, all this declares the glory of God. And 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 12 says that we also uh, know God or, or we receive the revelation of God through a special or providential circumstances. There are certain experiences in life that will give us the, the awareness of the existence of this beautiful God. And of course, the most important of all, the most evident of, of, of all, the one that you and I uh, have um, received is the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through His ministry, through His life, we, you and I, can know about this God. This is found in John chapter 1, and verse 18. John 1 in verse 18. Now, listen, friends, despite being able to use all those means of communication, God has chosen you. He has, has chosen me to announce, to proclaim, to publish the plan of salvation to others. What is that plan of salvation? Again, just telling people there is a God who is looking for you. There is a God who, who wants you to, to, to come back to Him. God wants those who have accepted salvation, and that's you, to share it with others. He wants this because the moment you go, you stop being shy, right? And you go and speak and tell people about this beautiful God, people will be saved because they will hear, because they will accept, because they will believe, they will be saved. Friends, that's a beautiful news, don't you think? God wants us to, to share what we have received 
be sure to receive it first, right? You cannot give what you don't have. Giving in this way others the opportunity to accept eternal life, which is the consequence, the benefit of accepting our Lord. And this is found in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8. When it says, Matthew 10, 8 says that you have received freely, you freely give, right? James chapter 5 and verse 20 says, says that um, when we do this, we will be able to save the souls of those that we are uh, sharing the gospel to. So that's, that's um, reason number one. When we offer salvation, when we tell people about this, this beautiful God, we give them the opportunity to hear, to believe, to, to accept and to believe so that they be, they come to be saved by this beautiful God. That's what reason number one. Reason number two actually touched my heart when I studied this. Friends, when you share God to others, you bring happiness to God. Just, just ponder for a minute, ponder for a moment on this thought. Me, a sinful creature, a wicked and weak creature, bringing happiness to the most powerful being of the universe? Let me take you to Luke chapter 15, verse 10 to see this. Luke chapter 15, verse 10 says, Likewise, I said to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. See, when you bring the gospel to someone, which is, which is the, the, the task that we're talking about here, and we will be talking about for 13 lessons. So uh, uh, sit down. And enjoy, friends, because the Bible will speak to us during these 13 weeks. The God of the Bible will speak to you and to me during these 13 weeks. Friends, friends, when we do this, we bring happiness to God. Imagine. Have you ever wondered how God feels about the pain, the suffering, the injustice sin has brought to our world? Have you ever wondered what how he's feeling now when, when so many people are dying because of this virus, so many people getting infected, so many people getting la laid off because of this virus. Have you ever wondered, what is God feeling at this moment, right? Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 17 gives an answer to that question. Jeremiah 13 and 17. In Jeremiah 13 and 17, when you read it, you will find that, that God says that his soul weeps. When things happen. See, when, when, when you suffer, you a son of God, you a daughter of God, when you suffer, God suffers. Jeremiah 13, 17 even mentions tears that God cries because of your suffering. So, so one desire, the greatest desire that he has in his, in his heart is to bring a stop to this, bring an end to this, so that a final stop and an end so that you and I stop suffering. So heaven is filled with expectancy every time we share, we proclaim, we tell somebody about the gospel with, uh, and share the gospel with others. As God is eager to see them opening their heart and accepting salvation, you want to bring happiness to the heart of God, tell somebody about this God. When a heart is opened to salvation, the angels burst into shouts of cheerfulness and God sings joyfully. Have you ever heard, have you ever heard that, that God sings joyfully because somebody has accepted him? This is found in, in Luke chapter 15, verse 77 in the, in the parable that, that uh, represents our, fa our Father in heaven. And Zephaniah also says in chapter 3 and verse 17, Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17, he says that God will, will joy over you with singing. God sings. You want to see God happy. Tell somebody about Him. What can we, what can be more rewarding? Right? Just imagine. What can be more fulfilling? What can be more, uh, what can be greater than knowing your witness brings joy to the heart of God? In a world of sadness. What can be more rewarding than this? In this sad wor world, telling people there is a God in heaven who is looking for you. He has solutions for you. You don't need to continue suffering. Come to Him. Come to Him. And once that person accepts, 
God rejoices. I mean, do I need to give you more reasons why you and I need to give testimony for this God? This should be it. But if you're not satisfied yet, let me give you one more. This is found in, in John 7 and verse 38. John 7 and verse 38. This is what Jesus says. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Let me translate this for, this for, for you, friends. The more you give, the more you receive. See, some, some of us uh, uh, tend to say always, oh, you know what, I, I don't know too much yet to share. I'm not too sure yet about what I know. I, I just know this much. I'm not ready to share it. Friend, if you share this little do you, do you already have, God will give you more and more and more and more. The more you share, the more you receive. The more you teach, the more you will know. Just think about these, these uh, rivers of living water uh, uh, flowing from within you. What happens when water um, when water stays naked? What happens when water gets stuck, right? In a pool, for instance, water becomes spoiled if it's not renewed in a daily basis. You have seen that. We may also get spoiled if we don't let living water flow through us. In the same way that water can stagnate, uh, state niche, you and I can also, our water can also be stuck and get rotten. As we mentioned before, God has many ways to reveal Himself. However, even when revealing Himself directly, He always put people in contact with other people. See, friends, the people that I have, uh, that, that, I, that I come in touch with, is different from the people that you will, got, will, will come in touch with. So there are people that no matter how much I know, no matter how much I try, I would not be able to reach out to, but you could, you could. There are people in my, in my sphere that you would not be able to reach out, but I can. So that's why I need to do my part. That's why you need to do your part. Just check the experiences of, of Saul and, or Cornelius, right? And uh, this is found in Acts chapter 9, 3, uh, 3 through 6 for uh, uh, Saul. And uh, for Cornelius, uh, a Gentile, in chapter 10, 10 of, of Acts, uh, verses 1 through 6, you will see how these people were converted and how they were inspired of sharing everyone even before they, they knew everything. Don't wait to know everything because that, for once, will never happen. Preaching the gospel is a blessing for us when we preach the gospel, when we tell somebody, don't, don't get scared about that word, preach. Preach again is just proclaiming, publishing, telling somebody about this loving God, telling about the invitation that God is, 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 uh, that God is looking for them. That's what preaching is. That's what sharing is. That's what testifying is. That's what witnessing is. It's the same word to describe the same uh, beautiful action. So when you preach the gospel, that will bless you first. Because you and I, we can grow spiritually and rejoice with Christ when people accept him. Now, let me give you another reason. If those were not enough for you, let me give you one more reason. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Matthew 28 and verse 19, we find the commander-in-chief, we find the one that has received all authority in the universe saying this, giving you this command. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Do you hear who's saying this? He's not saying if you feel like. He's not saying, the, the commander-in-chief is not saying if um, you don't have anything else to do, if you are free. No, he's saying, go, therefore, this is, this is imperative. He's saying, go, therefore, and make disciples. This is a commandment given by the maximum, the greatest authority of the universe. Why is he, why is he saying this to, to us? Because God doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants everyone to come to repentance. Because His, his desire is for people to, give, to be saved. And that simply means to come back to Him and receive life, eternal life. Right? Therefore, He has commanded us. God has commanded you to share the gospel with everyone. 
everyone you come in touch with, everyone you come in contact with, everyone and your everyone are might be different from my everyone, but we all have to do it because the commander in chief has commanded this uh, to, to be done. He, our God, patiently wait, waits for you and for me to fulfill this commandment. Please don't make him wait more. It is time that I will be responsible for this call, that I will be responsible to, make, to do what my, my God and my Lord has commanded me to do. Throughout history, God has chosen men and women. God has chosen nations. God has chosen peoples uh, to make salvation known. And today He has, He has, He's inviting you again. He has chosen you to be that agent so that you will proclaim, declare, share, witness to everyone there is a God in heaven who is looking for them. So just think about this for a person, for you, a believer like you, to neglect or minimize the command of, of Christ is to fail in the purpose you and I um, of, of you, yours and mine existence. And, and if we do that, friends, we're missing the greatest of all the blessings. Because when you see somebody coming to the, f the foot of the cross, when you see somebody accepting this Jesus, when you see God being happy because you have done that, your heart will be filled with happiness. That's what joy is all about. When you see somebody changing, changing the world for the Lord, your heart will experience such a joy that you will not have, word, you will not have, have words to explain this. Let me give you one more reason in case you are not satisfied with these three, which I think personally are powerful enough. Either one of them. But let me, let me show you one more, the last one. This is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 5, verses 14 and 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. This is what the Bible says. For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, that's Jesus, then all died, and he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Let me translate this, what Paul is saying in 2 Corinthians 5 to you, friends. He's simply saying, Jesus died on the cross for you. Now he's giving you his life to you. And you are to live your life to him. So your life doesn't belong to you anymore. Your life is his. And so since your life is His, you are now to do what He did with all compassion and love in the same degree of compassion and love, and that is His mission becomes your mission. The word compel here in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15, it says, for the love of, of, of Christ compels us. The word, this word compels, according to the dictionary, um, is translated, I mean, it, it, is, it, it means to force somebody to do something, to force somebody to do something, or to make something necessary, to force somebody. But now, listen, when God forces us to do something, He doesn't use strength. He uses love, right? The love of Jesus moved Paul to spread the Word of God all over the world since he understood that Jesus had given His life to save Paul. The same experience, you and I, we have had this experience. And now, so, we, once we love, we have become to experience this love for Jesus. Now, that love is to move us to tell others that there is a God in heaven and He is looking for people. So, witnessing is, is a loving response to God's love. Witnessing is a loving response to God's love. Listen to what Philippians chapter 1, verses 14 and 16 says. Most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear, out of goodwill. They do so out of love. People, people in the church in Philippians, they were telling everyone about Jesus because they were in love with Jesus. 
And here's a question for you, friend. Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? See, the result of knowing more about Jesus is loving, more, loving, loving Him more. The question here again is, do you love Him? And if your answer is, no, uh, I'm not sure about it, or yes, I know He died for me, and I thank Him for that, but I don't know how to, how to actually feel the, the emotion, the feeling of love. Well, friend, you might need to spend more time with this book. You might need to experience what the book says so that you may know the God of the book more. The more you know this God, the more you love, you will love Him. And once you love Him, then you will know that the moment He says you go, you will go. Because you will go forced by His love. This quote that I want to end uh, this study with is found in Testimonies to the Church for the Church, uh, Book 9, Chapter 4, and, ver and page 43. And this is what the, Bible, what, uh, the Testimonies for the Church um, says on this. I, I, like, I like this quote and I want to share it with you, friends. In the power of the Spirit, the delegated servants of Christ, that means you and me, you and I, are to bear witness, are to bear witness for their leader. The yearning desire of the Savior for the salvation of sinners is to mark all their efforts. Everything you and I do has to be marked by the proclamation of this gospel. The quote continues. The gracious invitation. What invitation? God is saying, come back to me. First given by, by Christ is to be taken by human voices, yours and mine, and sounded throughout the world and then revelation 22 and verse 17 will be fulfilled whosoever will let him take the water of life freely god is inviting the world he's inviting you to come to him and once you come to him you will fall in love with him because there is nothing not to like about this loving god beautiful god and so once you love in, once you fall in love, rather, in love uh, with Him, you will want to tell everyone. And that's the good news, because once you tell everyone, people will hear, people will accept, people will believe, people will be saved. And you know what? It was thanks to your efforts. That's why God wants to use you. Because the joy this will bring will be just un unexplainable. You will not have words to explain this, friend. And so God wants you to experience that because you will grow, because you will know Him more, because you will love Him more, because people will come to love Him more, and then everyone will come to know, to hear, to accept, to believe, and to be saved because this God is inviting them to come back home. You have already done this. You have come back home. Friends, why not? sharing this with others. It's not just about living a righteous life. That's important. But people need to hear, why is it that you are such a good person? In that moment, this will give you the, op the, the possibility for you to say, it's not me. It's because there is a God in heaven who produces, who makes me um, want to do this. He does it through me. And so you will have the opportunity to, to tell others about this loving God. But you, friend, you, friend, you need to open your mouth. This world is coming to an end. The Lord is not delaying. He's waiting for you. You are the one delaying. Because He's waiting for you to open your mouth and tell everyone God is looking for them. He, he found you. And now He wants to use you to find the rest of his children. Will you allow him to do so? Well, today is the day of salvation for you and for everyone you know. May you take up this mission brand new again. May you take up the power that the Holy Spirit wants to give you so that when you go out, you can testify of this beautiful God. I want to challenge you, friend, challenge you to live for God to tell the world about this God and so that we may prepare this world for the soon coming of its Savior.
God bless you. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, thank you very much for giving us such an awesome opportunity to grow as we tell people about you. To bring salvation to people through the communication of the gospel. To bring happiness to your heart when one that we have communicated the gospel to repents and comes back to you. And finally, to obey, to obey this commandment because we have received this commandment from our commander-in-chief. And we do it not because we are forced, but because we are compelled by your love. You love us so much that you have, chose, you have chosen us to be these agents to share your love with others. And the more we share, the more we will receive. Thank you, Father, for being so loving. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you because he died on that cross, showing, demonstrated the greatest of all love. We praise your name. And we give, we give you all, our, all the glory as we go out and make disciples for you. Bless us, empower us, and go with us as you have promised. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you, friend. And remember, there is no better, a, a more simple way to share the gospel than sharing videos like this. So why don't you just click on link and click, and click on the share button also and send it to everyone. Let people hear the gospel, right? Let people uh, uh, expose people, your friends, your, your family members to the gospel. Click share, click like, comment, and send it to everyone. Let people hear there is a loving God who is looking for them. God bless you. See you next week. Bye-bye.